so don't waste your time doing it. I got no results from it. And I went to Sarah's house the next night and I said, look, if you, if you wrap me, I gave her $25. Um, I said, if you wrap me in this one wrap, if I get results from it, I'm going to sign up um, and join your team. And you guys, I still didn't believe that it was going to work. So I thought that was a um, very safe thing to say. And I can tell you about 10 minutes into having that wrap on, I was getting a stomach ache because I was, I knew that it was working and I took it off and I got great results. Um, and Sarah went and got her computer and signed me up and I left her house thinking that I lost a hundred dollars joining this business. So that's kind of where I started. Um, and it, I just, you guys have made it every mistake in the book. Um, I was the worst DT on the planet and still found success. So if you're feeling like you're failing, like you're just, just keep failing because you're going to get there. And, um, I'm just, you know, proof of what can happen if you don't quit and you stay positive. Um, and you just are open to learning new ideas and applying new things. Um, as you go, you can take it as far as you want. Yeah. I love that. I love how you, um, just like how you just kept going and you were complete, like didn't believe in any of it and you just, but you believed in Sarah. And, you know, you, if you guys don't know Lindsay or follow her on Facebook, like she has the most clever, funniest posts that I have ever read. And I love just even like when they pop up, even though like I'll, you know, I just love reading them because it, it always puts a smile on my face because they're just so clever and just one of the most positive people. And so I can't even agree more. Like if you just stay positive in this business, I think that you can do whatever you want. And just the biggest thing is just not giving up. Yeah. So for sure. And find something fun to post about. I mean, I, that's otherwise, you know, this business would totally bore me if it, if I made my posts like I did in the beginning, look like an advertisement, you guys, that's not me. So, um, make it fun, make it you, make it something that, you know, somebody would, um, want to read about, you know, they scroll past all the advertisements. So I would say find something fun to put in your post because that's what kind of draws people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and it's so true because, like, like Lindsay, she's another distributor, but I love reading her posts, whereas there's other distributors who I just kind of skim past because I know what they're, what they're talking about, you know, what they're, what they're going to say. So I love that. Um, okay, so how did you build your business? Because you've been in it. How long have you been in it? And how, what did you do? Did you do parties? Did you do social media? Was it a good combination or event or uh, how did you build it? Good combination. I did not do parties in the beginning. I was one of those that said, I'm not going to an event. I'm not wearing a t-shirt. I'm not throwing a party. I'm not doing any of this stuff that they say you should do. I, I just travel up the company as well, but I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. But all I did for like the first eight months was sell my auto ship. I sold two packs of wraps every single, every single month. And that's, I, I thought that was, I was coming out ahead with cash in my hand. So I didn't, I didn't even care about the website. I didn't care about directing people to it. Um, I just wanted the cash in my hand. Um, later on, I knew that I could have, you know, done a lot better with the commissions if I would have directed people towards the website. Um, but I did a combo. I, I was out there sharing it. I didn't know what I was sharing, but I, I was sharing the wrap and I was sharing what it did for me and how I didn't believe in it at first. And I just got it on and I saw results. So I got the wrap on people. Um, I did post in the, you know, in the beginning and I, I was very consistent with that. And people knew that I did this business and they were starting to ask questions. So definitely a combo. Yeah. Both social awesome. media and face to face. Yeah. Do you use, is it, was it mainly Facebook or do you use Instagram as well? Or I use Instagram, but I definitely like Facebook over Instagram. Yeah. I don't it's know so why. much more personal. But that's how I am too. I, I like Instagram, but I feel more that I can build relationships better on Facebook. People seem to, you know, want to build relationships more on Facebook because it's more of a personal. For sure. Know, I think. And cold market, I think, is more on the Instagram side of things, whereas a lot of my people were more network people. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to do a lot of videos. So for me, Facebook just is, is better because it never cuts you off. I can do an 18 minute video. Not that anyone would watch that, but um, Facebook doesn't limit you to that Instagram. You get 30 seconds. So, right. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Let me look at my notes. Um, so, so a couple, well, when you went presidential, you just got an incredible amount of loyal customers, but typically how do you get your distributors and loyal customers? Um, is it, are you reaching out to people or are you, 
Is it people that are reaching out to you? How are you, you know, working your business daily to get those loyal customers and distributors? Yeah, it's a little of both. Um, I literally, I just am really intentional. Um, I, I listen to kind of what people um, are doing in their life. And, um, you know, but I talk about the products, but I also, if they're, you know, if I get a vibe that they're even slightly curious about the business, I sign them up as distributors. Um, for me, I was never even good at getting loyal customers. I'm better at the distributor side of it because that's what I was in the beginning. Um, so the language for me just comes off as it's smarter to be a distributor because honestly, you guys, it is. There's no, no contract, no commitment. You know, if it doesn't work out for them in three months, they can totally you know, quit and there's no cancellation fee. Um, you get the products for 40% off as well and a potential to make money. So when I'm talking, I think it comes out in my verbiage, whereas other people might be more comfortable signing LCs because they were in the beginning and that's kind of how they approach people with it. But for me, it's easier to sign distributors. Um, but I definitely have to reach out to them in mostly Facebook messages. Um, those that I have their number to, I'll text or call them. But it's mostly Facebook messaging. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um, what about like when you have kind of worn out like that war market? So how are you, you know, growing your network from there? Because I know you're such a personable person. You know, you, you like that to build those relationships and that kind of thing. So how are you building that network when you, you know, when you run out of that warm network? I love that question. But there is when people come to me and say that they've worn out the warm network, it's it's not true because I've been in it four years. Forty seven loyal customers that I signed in February, they were all warm network people and I've been in it four years. So and I tried. I, I had a stretch of twenty days where I was literally doing this business kind of nonstop and only took breaks to go to yoga and kind of eat and then I'd go back to doing, you know, messaging and I still didn't get through all my Facebook contacts. So when they say that they're running out of warm network people I just, I don't believe it. Um, and I tell them, you know, my story. And I said, you know, have you reached out to these people again and again and again? Because you guys, it's true. Like people do not, you know, even the people that told me yes in February that they wanted to help me out and they wanted to order. I still had to follow up with them about three or four times just to get their order in. So it's more so in the follow-ups, you know, just sending one message to somebody, you know, three months ago, you need to, you know, re- re-message these people because you got to treat them like they're brand new. Yeah, definitely. So what if you, when you have a new distributor and they sign up and they tell you, Lindsay, I do not know anybody. I literally have 50 people on my Facebook page. I don't have an Instagram. I don't have a big family. I have two friends. What do you, how do you go about that? What do you um, start with those 50 people? Um, you know, start, start there, but you need to, be continuing to make more friends, having more fun and telling people what you want the freedom for, whether it's paying off student loans, paying off your house, paying off your car payment, um, getting more time so you can, you know, step away from your job a little bit. Um, you know, they need to be sharing with people and 50 people. I mean, you can, you can build a pretty good team just off of that. So I would say, you know, reach out to these people and be very intentional um, in your conversations with them. And, and literally you can grow your network. I, I would say even even from five people, you know, takes yeah. I'm going to build a, a strong global team, and it and I honestly know that I could get five five strong people in all different countries, and that just takes my team to a whole nother level as well. Yeah, definitely, and it's so true because you can literally say you have five people; they all want to be loyal customers. You could even say like okay, can you refer me, you know, five more of your friends or can we have a party or, you know, can I, you know, do you have 10 people who would like to earn extra uh, of your friends who would want extra money or anything like that? And, you know, you could build your network that way as well. And I did that too. Um, in February, all of these people that were signing up, I, I asked for their permission, you know, some of them, I just did it because I knew our relationship, but I would ask them, Hey, you know, thank you so much for ordering that really helped me help me out setting me closer to my goal. Do you mind if I tag you in a post? And that just reached another 300 people. You know, I would thank them for ordering. I would tell them what their order went towards and then they would tag people, you know, it would go to their news feed and their, all their friends and family. So that's another way to reach, just tap into different networks. Absolutely. And people will see it that way too. 
That's an awesome idea. That's a really good idea. Um, and I've done that a few times. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I actually forgot about, I forgot about that, but I have done that in the past where like I, a loyal customer would send me like an awesome before and after picture and I'd be like, can you post that on your page and then tag me in it? Because that way then all their friends see it. And I've gotten so many loyal customers just from people like, oh, where do I order or how do I get that? Totally. So. They might have, you know, they might not want to do the business at all, but they're more than willing if you ask them, they're more than willing to help you out, um, especially if they're happy with their results. I just, I posted it all day long. I posted literally screenshot their text messages back to me and posted that and tagged them, you know, in certain yeah. ones. And yeah, it was just another way to tap into even more. more yeah, people. that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. um, okay, sorry, I lost my notes here. Hold on. <laughs> I had my notes on my phone and I just, um, I gave my phone to, my husband is out of town, so I gave my home, my kids the phone because he was calling them. Oh. So they're on my computer, so that's why I keep looking back and forth. Um, okay, so before you promoted to presidential, did you do anything, like, you obviously had that mindset, like, okay, I'm going to go presidential this month. So did you do anything different that month that you went presidential than you would normally do in your daily routine? I did. I was... Uh, it was a total mindset, you guys, and if you haven't promoted, you're going to understand when we say this mindset. It, it's not something that I feel um, weekly or monthly, like it comes in phases, and when you get into this mindset, I left conference knowing that I was going to hit presidential. There's, I looked at it like, you know what, I'm set up for presidential. I need a massive amount of volume. I'm going to set my goal to double of what I need, and this, this bonus opportunity doesn't come come to people like this is not a normal bonus any of these bonuses you can't just go up to your boss and say hey can I have a hundred thousand dollar bonus this year I'm working extremely hard it does not happen so when I left conference I'm like there's there's no excuse for this like it has to get done and I looked at what I needed to do and I was very intentional of every single thing I did for the next 20 days leaving conference I didn't start this until February 8th and I was done I think on the 26th or 27th of the month. Um, so I, I was very intentional. I, I woke up every single day treating it like it was February 1st and I never looked back. I never complained about people that were saying no. I focused on every single yes that I had. Um, even if it was some of those days, I only had two loyal customers, which to me that, you know, that, that was a lot. I, I haven't even signed 47 customers in a year. Um, but the, for that month, I set it set my goal to a hundred LCs. And, um, for every single customer, I just was so intentional. I, you know, right. I wrote out their first and last name, you know, what they ordered when they ordered it. Um, I made sure to thank them. I turned, I turned everything into kind of a game for me and for the customers that were kind of following me. Um, I started thanking them online. I started telling them that I would do yoga poses for a minute upside down on my head for every order that came through. And I literally did that. Um, and then I took a picture of that reposted just to get everybody um, following it, honestly. And for the people that I had reached out to that didn't even reply yet, a lot of them were coming back a couple days later saying, Hey, how, how can I help you now? I want to help you, you know? Um, so I just was very, very intentional, um, of every, every single post, everything I did, every single message I sent out and every single reply and follow up. So, yeah, that's awesome. And I totally agree. I think you have to have like that mindset. Like I'm going to go there. Um, like I know I, t you know, if you like, and I'm sure you have this on your team or on every team, but you know, if somebody's trying to go say that they're mapped for Emerald and, you know, they're so close and then they just say like, well, I hope I get there. Well, by them just saying like, I hope I get there, you're not going to get there. It's not in the mindset. The mindset verbiage is I am and it's, it's when you're going to do it. So yes. um, you gotta, you have to pay attention. Even your verbiage is going to matter for your, for your major promotions. And I, I posted on the wiring page, um, you know, after I hit my promotion I'm very very um I, I look back at kind of everything I've I've ever done and I I looked back and I found this picture of me holding um I am presidential sign you know with a goal that I had uh, over a year ago um and I, I posted it just to kind of relate to everybody else when I was holding that sign I could see it in my face you know even reading the post I'm like this 
I did not actually mean that. You know, yes, I wanted it, but I, I actually didn't mean that. When I, when I look back at what I did this February, I meant that. And that's, that's the only, only difference. Um, it's the feeling that you have. And if you truly want it, you're going to get it. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Yeah. And I remember you guys like Lindsay, I remember seeing a post from her. She was letting everybody hold her accountable for this. Like, so she made a post like saying, you guys, I'm going to get a hundred loyal customers this month. And she was letting the world hold her accountable for this. Not just herself. She wasn't keeping it in. She was telling everybody. So, and I think that that's really important too, to tell everybody your goals, like let everybody know what you're trying to go for. That way you can let, you know, that way people can hold you accountable for your, your goals and your actions. That, and I remember telling Sarah, I said, I'm, I'm hitting Prez this month. I go, I'm, I'm signing a hundred LCs. And I knew she thought I was totally nuts. Like she knows I'm not a top LC enroller. Everybody knows that. And I told her that I was like, you know what? I'm that DT that looks at steps of success. And I'm like, oh, how do people get four LCs in a month? I'm that, per I'm that dis distributor. But I looked at it and I was like, I'm throwing steps to success to the side. I'm signing 100 this month. I don't care what that sheet of paper yeah. says. Like, this is my goal. That's everybody else's goal. Um, so just kind of, yeah, hold yourself accountable. Tell as many people as you can what you're doing. And I was you know, I, I told the world exactly what I was going for, which is very new to me too. A lot of times people hold back what they're um, trying to achieve. And for me, it worked in the opposite. It was everybody liked seeing what I was going for because it gave them, um, you know, kind of a reason to order our products initially. Um, a lot of people, we think we have this urgency, you know, and, and we think they need the wraps or the greens or defining gel or the protein shakes, but you guys, this is not an urgent thing for everybody else that we're talking to. They don't need it today um, unless you give them a reason to need it today. And um, a lot of those LCs are still ordering, but it took me giving them my goal for them to get on board. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So you said that at the beginning of this, you said that you made a lot of mistakes before or, you know, things that you probably should have done differently. So what are a few things that you would have done differently that? Um, I would have started a lot sooner. Um, I was that, you know, the turtle going up the peanut butter hill, <laughs> the slowest person on the planet. Um, I just would have jumped in with more confidence and I would have jumped in being myself instead of, you know, copy and pasting all these messages that are working for other people. That's great. But I would have been myself from the beginning. Um, and that's how I signed those distributors is because that was my verbiage, but signing LCs, I wasn't myself until, you know, until February hit and I sent a message directly from my heart saying, this is what it is. This is these are the products that we have. Um, this is what I'm asking you to do. And this is what I'm going to get if, if you do this. And um, that wasn't a message that I got from Sarah. It wasn't a message that I got from anybody else in the company. And that's the message that worked for me. So I would say have confidence. Our products are amazing and we just need your personality to promote them. Not anybody else's, just yours. Like be yourself and promote them in a way that makes people curious and makes them want, want to join our team and want to try our products. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of like branding yourself. Like you want to brand yourself and make it, you know, like these are your products and this is your business and people are going to buy into you because they love how you relate to people, how you were relating to them or how you, you know, post on Facebook or social media or how you interact with people. And yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think it's, it's so huge to yourself and try to find that niche, whatever works for you. Cause it's so true. Like whatever, anything I do, it might not work for another distributor, you know, or whatever you do might not work for me or vice versa. So it's so important to find like whatever works for you and just kind of run with it. And yep. so yeah, I love cool. that. Um, okay. So um, if you were to give like advice, like a couple of things or even just one, you know, piece of advice, what would you give everyone? I would say um, get out of your own head for sure, because I was there um, and just truly think about it. Your, if you've got the mindset right now or what you need to do to get yourself there. Um, and then I would say, you know, stay positive on Facebook and face to face. Um, post about friendships, fun and freedom. People want to see 
what you're doing and why you're doing it and how many people you're helping and where you're, where you're going, give them a vision. Um, and then I would just say, you know, stop looking at, I get this every single month from, you know, messages from other DTs. Oh, I only have five days left. Oh, I only have 10 days left. No, you have 10, you know, 10 days left. You have five days left. Like you need to switch. It's again, a mindset thing, but you need to treat the first of the month, like it's the 31st and you need to treat the 31st of the month. Like it's the first of every month. A lot can happen in just one day. So, um, stop looking at the, the dates like that. Um, but just maximize what you can do in every single day. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, if you ever feel like you're like stuck in a rut or that you, um, you know, are just kind of, you're kind of at a standstill. What do you, what do you suggest to do or what do you personally do yourself when you're kind of in that kind of stagnant part of your business? Um, which happens and it's going to continue to happen. This business is kind of a roller coaster. If you've been in it a long time, you, you kind of know that. Um, so I just expect it um, in a way, but also getting myself out of it, I look at what I'm doing and um, it comes down to, you know, being proactive, but I, I, if I'm stuck in the rut, I either, I go, um, you know, find more friendships or talk about the ones I already have. Um, I have more fun and I post about it all the time. And then, yeah, I talk about the freedom and, and even if, you know, I'm going for my next goal, I'm looking back at, you know what, what has this done for me? And like, how far have I come? And I look back at all of those things and I post about that and I talk about that and it, it just, it gets you through through the rut because there's so much more to that. But um, yeah, I just I drop the f bombs all the time. Yeah, I love that. And I don't know if any of you guys know, but I just learned this actually this past weekend that Lindsay is the one who came up with the friendship, fun, and freedom. That is like Lindsay's the one who came up with that, and so I just think that's so amazing. I I had no idea until Friday. <laughs> so my life on and off social media. That's what it's all about. Is those f bombs and yeah. People, people like it. Um, everybody needs, you know, great friendships in their life. They all want to have more fun and everybody, every single person is looking for more freedom, whether it's time or money. So, um, post about that and be about that. You know, if you're posting like that on Facebook, be that in person too. Um, people can read into you. So yeah, you know, definitely. Your tip. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Let me see. Somebody asked a question. Oh, Mary says, I love seeing where you are headed next. You have great vacations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, even my vacations, you know, I disagreed with one thing that they said at the It Works You. They said, you know, stop taking all these vacations. But for me, it's the opposite. I'm, I'm going in a direction where I want a global team. And the only place that I meet these global people is, you know, either on social media, you know, Instagram and whatnot. But I was in Costa Rica. No, it's not an open country, but I, I can't tell, me, tell you how many people I met that were on vacation in Costa Rica from countries, you know, Australia, got England. I have so many others that I now have relationships with because of, of being with them in Costa Rica. So, yeah. yeah definitely. Awesome. Well, um, does anybody else have any questions or Jen, do you have any questions you want to add or ask? No, I don't. I, I love everything that you said because, uh, when I started, I was thinking, Oh, this is not real. <laughs> so it, it soaks in for me, but I love the company and, uh, I, we have a lot of distributors who are feeling the same way. So I, I'm so happy that we got to hear from you tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. I know. I love hearing your story because it's so often that there's so many distributors who start and then they just don't do anything for a while or they just don't know what to do or they just don't really truly in their heart believe it. I think that we all feel that way. Like, what is this? What am I doing? Like, you know, is this for real? So I love your story because it's 100%. Like, that's how it is. Like, you didn't believe it and then you just stayed with it. And like, now look at you. You're presidential and you're amazing. You branded yourself so incredibly incredible where people look up to you and you know want to be you know want to be a part of whatever you are a part of and so I absolutely love your story and I love you and I just love how your energy and your positivity just relate or can just you know radiate to other people yeah and talk about your failures you guys you're not going to be 
um, you're not gonna be perfect and you're human, you know? So the more you can relate to people, my, fa my failures, every single one of them played out in my favor because people can relate to that. No, I wasn't great, or I wasn't perfect at this. And that's what they kind of want to see because it, it helps them, it gives them confidence that, you know what, they can screw up and still do well. So um, yeah, just be you, find, you know, you don't have to like every single product that we have, just find one that you really like and that you're really passionate about and post about that, share about that and, you know, let them decide, give them the catalog, let them decide which one they like, but promote what you like and just be yourself. Yeah, I did have one other question I forgot to ask you. When somebody tells you no, um, how do you how do you take that? Do you just kind of brush off your shoulders, or do you do you kind of like oh crap like that really hurt like or what do you like how do you handle a no? Um, well, I expect a no. Honestly, I, I tell I tell every single person that you know if you can go get ten no's a day, um, you're you're going to be doing really well because um, the more no's you get, the better the better you do. But I just expect it honestly. Yeah. Um, and I take it as no, it's a no, but I heard it as it's a no for right now, you know, mm -hmm. come back to me and ask me later. So I don't, I don't hear like, no, never. I, I never hear that. Yeah. I just hear, come back to me later. Yeah, definitely. And, and another tip is every single person on my team. I've, I've got some great people on my team, but you know, Angelo Badalato, I've got Jenny, I've got Ann Sinsack. Every single person on my team has told me no, at least two times. And so if, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. these, are, these are major people that have done even better than I have. And they told me no twice. Yeah. So go, go get your nose. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Um, okay. Do you have anything else you want to add? Any other tips or advice that you want to share with us? No, I think your team is awesome. And I love seeing yeah. you guys on social media and at events, but I hope, I hope y'all kill it. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? You guys can unmute your mics if you do. I would just um, like you to continue to do the raffle tickets with the arm's length raffle tickets, please. That was good. Send a message to Danielle and Sarah, and that can be done. I will, but I think Danielle doesn't read my messages anymore because I like to complain up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no complaining, but send it to Sarah. <laughs> I'll send it to her. She still likes me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have any questions that you want to ask Lindsay? Now's your chance. No? Well, Lindsay, we thank you so much for being on this and just helping our team out. I mean, that's, I just love that you, like, I asked Lindsay to, to do this and without a hesitant, she, you know, she said yes. And so I absolutely just appreciate that and you helping us and just giving us all of your amazing advice and tips and um, everything that you shared with us was just amazing. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Um, I will stay on the this for a, a little bit longer. If any of you guys have questions, Lindsay, you're more than welcome to jump off if you want or anybody else. If anybody has questions that you guys want to ask or anything like that, I'll stay on for a little bit. All right. See you later, guys. All right. Bye, Lindsay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ah, come on. Eat your ice cream. Why? Do you guys have any things you guys want to go over? Yeah. I loved her. <laughs> I know. I love Lindsay. She's just an amazing <laughs> She's so positive and just so inspiring. Yeah.